In this lecture, we go into a little bit more detail about trade agreements. Although these economic, political, legal, and social cultural issues may seem like daunting barriers to international trade, there are organizations and agreements that are intended to foster trade and help companies get involved and succeed in global markets. The, agreement, the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, or GATT, G -A -T -T, originally signed by 23 nations in 1947, provides a forum for tariff negotiations and a place where international trade problems can be discussed and resolved. More than 100 nations abided by its rules. GATT sponsors rounds of negotiations aimed at reducing trade restrictions. The last rounds of negotiations created the World Trade Organization, or WTO, in 1995. The WTO is an international organization dealing with the rules of trade between nations. Key to the WTO, World Trade Organization, are the WTAO agreements. WTO agreements, which are legally legal grounds for legal ground rules for international commerce. The North America Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, is in the news quite a bit with the uh, presidential campaigns. It is an agreement that eliminates most tariffs and trade restrictions on agricultural and manufactured product, products to encourage trade among Canada, the United States, and Mexico. NAFTA effectively merged Canada and the United States and Mexico into one market of more than 470 million consumers and virtually eliminated all tariffs on goods produced and traded, creating a free trade area. The estimated annual output from this trade alliance is about $17 trillion. Despite its benefits, NAFTA has been controversial and disputes continue to arise over the implementation of the trade agreement. While many Americans fear the agreement would erase jobs in the United States, Mexicans have been disappointed that the agreement failed to create more jobs for them. Although NAFTA has been controversial, it has become a positive factor for U.S. firms wishing to engage in international marketing. Because licensing requirements have been relaxed under the pact, smaller business that previously could not afford to invest in Mexico and Canada will be able to do business in those markets without having to locate there. NAFTA, which went into effect on January 1, 1994, has increased trade among Mexico, the U.S., and Canada. Despite NAFTA and its benefits, it's also been controversial, and disputes continue to arise over the implementation of the agreement. NAFTA went into effect in January the 1st, 1994, to make it easier for the U.S. businesses to invest in Mexico and Canada, provides perfect protections for intellectual property, expands trades requiring equal treatment, and simplifies country of origin rules. Another important trade agreement is the European Union agreement called the European Community or Common Market. This was established in 1958 to promote trade among its members and is one of the largest single markets today. The EU has nearly a half a billion consumers with a GDP of more than $17 trillion. To facilitate free trade among members, the EU is working towards standardization of business regulations and requirements, import duties, value-added taxes, elimination of custom check, customs checks, and creation of standardized currency for use by all members. The, the EU is currently under stress in the international markets, as you might hear on the news, that's associated with the, the, some of the issues from the recession and the global financial downturn in 2008-2009. The Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, APEC, also is an important trade agreement. It was established in 1989 and promotes open trade and economic and, economic and technical cooperation among all of its member nations. These 21-member alliance holds 55% of the world's GDP. The Asia-Pacific 
Cooperation was established to promote open trade and cooperation among its member nations. They have increased, they have increasingly become sophisticated in their global business over the last three decades. And you can see the countries that are involved here. Another agreement is the ACEM, World Bank and International Monetary Funds. They were established, the ACAN, what ASCEN was established in 1967, promotes trade and economic integration among member nations. These nine member alliance represent 600 million people with a GDP of $2 trillion. The World Bank, more formally known as the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, was established by the industrialized nations, including the United States, in 1946 to loan money to underdeveloped and developing countries as a means to promote economic development. The International Monetary Fund was established in 1947 to promote trade among member nations by eliminating trade barriers and fostering financial cooperation. The IMF is the closest thing in the world to an international central bank. In the next section, we'll talk about how there are various approaches for companies to expand internationally and how to think about those possibilities.